Are you using your smartphone to shoot video and want to record great sound too? In this video, I will look at various strategies to get the best sound. More and more people now shoot video on their mobile device, but the saying goes that audiences have little tolerance for bad audio quality. There are various ways you can record audio for your video and various situations too. Whether you are shooting a short film to submit to a festival, filming interviews or working in mobile journalism, you need good audio. So what's the best setup for your particular needs? In recent years, companies like Rode, Comica and others have designed microphones specifically to be used with smartphones. Usually these microphones plug directly or indirectly into your device to record better audio direct to your smartphone. Meanwhile, other microphones record audio via a separate recorder to sync later. The simplest and most cost-effective method of recording audio is to use the device's own mic or microphones. For example, I capture the voice for my YouTube videos using my Samsung S9 and the native voice recorder app. First, I tried to use the Rode VideoMic ME. Then I tried my cheap wired Boya BY-M1 Lavalier microphone. But for a voiceover audio, I really wanted a richer, close microphone quality. So then I tried my Samsung's inbuilt microphone, but it was picking up too many reflections from the room. In a dedicated recording studio, walls are covered in material which stops reflections, otherwise known as echo. This is because audio quality degrades when reflections of your voice bounce back and enter the microphone too. To counter these reflections, I placed the smartphone on a soft surface, like a sofa or my bed. Now my voice hits the sound absorbing soft surface behind the phone and there's no reflection. To improve this further, I place pillows or cushions around the smartphone to create a mini sound recording booth. With this setup, most of the reflections are removed, which gives me a warmer, richer and clearer audio quality. Next, set your voice recorder app to record at the highest quality. On my native Samsung app, the best quality is 256 kilobytes per second at 48 kilohertz. There's also the option to record stereo should you wish to. One useful setting is the interview mode, which allows you to record audio from both the mics at both ends of the device. The only problem I had with the Samsung voice recorder app was that it only records M4A files, which are compressed like MP3 files. So I downloaded a free app called Voice Recorder, which has the option to record WAV files or WAV files. So the narration audio in this video is recorded using that app. Lastly, when I'm recording, I sit or even lie with my mouth very close to the microphone. I then use a popping shield from another mic, holding it across the Samsung mic to remove pops. This isn't the highest quality audio you'll ever record, but it's pretty good considering I'm just using a native smartphone microphone. While the inbuilt microphone of your device might be good quality, the problem is it's an omnidirectional microphone. This means it picks up audio from all directions. So unless the subject's mouth is a few centimeters from the microphone, you will get a lot of background noise and voice reflections. Background noise combined with an echoing voice make your audio difficult for people to listen to. To reduce this problem, directional microphones were invented. A shotgun mic is a highly directional microphone microphone, meaning it records audio from the direction it is pointed. Mini shotgun microphones can be plugged directly into your smartphone with no cable involved. I have the Rode VideoMic ME, which plugs into the 3.5mm headphone socket of my Samsung S9. No adapters needed. However, if your smartphone has no 3.5mm headphone socket, you will either need a different model microphone or an adapter. One of the great things about this microphone is it can mount directly to your smartphone. Other similar mini shotgun mics, including Rode's Video Micro, use a cold shoe designed to mount on a DSLR. While you can use these mics with a smartphone, they require an extra grip for mounting. This mini shotgun is more directional than your smartphone's inbuilt mic, but for best results you need to be pretty close. If you're pretty close to the microphone it's actually quite good quality and probably is a better choice than your inbuilt microphone but if you move away from it 
So if you wanted to stand at all of that distance, uh, then it might not be such a good option. Probably better off with a clip-on mic. In terms of audio quality, I would say the Video Mic ME is pretty good. Personally, I have used it to shoot one scene in an episode of Silent Eye. The scene was inside a car where it wasn't practical to take our sound recorders, but also I was close to the actors and the interior of the car, being small and covered in soft material for less reflections, is very good for audio quality anyway. You checking up on me? Do you know how much damage an unhappy cab driver can do to business? A happy one's worth his weight. I've been singing your praises, my friend. Oh, good to hear. Like you said, everything just clicked. All my life, I wanted my parents' approval. And suddenly, ping. Apart from that scene, I used it as a backup for the rest of the shoot on that episode. The unlocking thought, which means while I mostly used the audio from the Sennheiser MKH416 on a boom, I had the video mic ME audio as backup in case I had problems with the 416 audio. There's a whole range of shotgun microphones, from budget mics and mini mics up to high-end mics for professionals. While the Video Mic ME is around £45, the Schurps CMIT5U has a recommended retail price of around £2,000. Spending that extra money will get you better audio quality, but it won't remove an air conditioning unit humming or stop your voice reflecting off walls. You'd also need an expensive recording device and other high-end accessories. There are many mid-budget shotgun mics designed to be mounted on top of a DSLR. These can also be used with a smartphone, but will need some kind of grip for mounting. If you are recording audio for a short film and have the resources, then a shotgun mic is best mounted to a boom pole. The microphone is then usually connected to an external recording device, and the whole setup really needs at least one extra person to hold the boom and operate the recorder. Alternatively, for using it in these kind of conditions where you're talking to camera and uh, if it's all set up in one position, uh, you can mount your shotgun microphone to a stand. And I have my 416 now mounted above me here, about half a meter away from my mouth, and so I can talk to you through this the medium of video. Uh, via my smartphone. In this setup, I'm not actually recording it directly to the smartphone. I'm recording it onto my H4n, my Zoom H4n. You can choose to record directly to your smartphone, then you would need some kind of adapter to go from the microphone to the smartphone. Remember, background noise and reflective surfaces still apply, no matter how expensive your microphone. And the further you are from the microphone, the more those two elements will ruin your audio. The Sennheiser MKH416 is a short shotgun interference tube microphone. This has been a workhorse go-to boom mic for sound recordists and filmmakers for decades. That's why when I came to shoot my no-budget feature in 2009, I spent £700 on one of these microphones. I still have this mic over 10 years later, and I use it on various projects. I've recorded sound for two feature films, a web series, a number of short films, and promo videos. Plus, when our sound recordist hasn't been available, I've used it for episodes of Silent Eye. While the 416 is intended more for exterior work, I can vouch that it operates well as a filmmaking all-rounder. This is a condenser mic, so it requires some kind of power, usually phantom power from the audio recorder. But there are also also battery powered versions. I have my Sennheiser hooked up to a Zoom H4n via an XLR cable. XLR is a way of connecting audio with higher quality and reduced interference. Then the mic is mounted to my Rode Boom pole via their pistol grip shock mount. To monitor the sound, I use headphones plugged into the Zoom H4n. Audio recorded with this setup allows me greater freedom when filming as I'm not tied to the microphone. The downside is is I need to sync the audio to the video when I come to edit. While this does take a little time, Adobe Premiere has an auto-sync feature which speeds things up. 
Sometimes known as lapel mics, clip-on microphones are very small and omnidirectional. So, while they can't be pointed at a sound source, they can be placed close to the subject's mouth. This is done by clipping them to clothing, either visible or hidden beneath. Depending what you're shooting, a lavalier mic can be connected via a direct cable or you can use the more expensive wireless version. Advantage number one, you can pretty much forget about the mic once it's set up. Secondly, the subject doesn't have to stand close to the camera if the mic is attached to it. As the microphone is attached to the subject, they can move around and the mic will always be the same distance from the audio source. Boya BYM1 is an omnidirectional lavalier microphone with a design friendly to smartphones, DSLRs, camcorders and audio recorders. The Boya BYM1 comes with a long cable, so you can get a good distance from the camera without too much trouble. The mic connects using a 3.5mm jack, so for smartphones without the 3.5mm headphone jack socket, you will need an adapter. The Boya BYM1 has two audio level settings, so make sure it's switched to the smartphone one, unless you're using it with another camera. Like when we only have one chocolate bar and we have to cut it up. So you get sent away because you don't do enough. When it comes to wireless Lavalier lapel microphones, these microphones have advantages and some disadvantages. Advantage, no cables means our subjects can move around freely. Disadvantages, these mics cost more and connection issues add complexity to audio recording. For recording a vlog, you don't need a wireless system costing thousands of dollars. And for low to no budget filmmakers, the cost of pro wireless sets is a bit prohibitive. Anyway, you can get some great sounding wireless kits for much less. Some systems come with more than one or may allow you to add further mics later, while while others are a single mic unit only. Traditional wireless microphones operate in the 470 to 698 MHz bandwidth, whereas new wireless microphones are coming on the market which use the 2.4 GHz bandwidth, which is essentially Wi-Fi. 2.4 GHz microphones are a great choice if you only need a few channels and like the hassle-free setup. For those who need lots of channels and ultra-low latency, UHF mics are still the best choice. These new wireless Systems from makers such as Sennheiser, Rode, and Saramonic generally come with a mic built into the transmitter, but there's also the option to add a clip on mic as well. What I like about this wireless Lavalier Lapel Kit is its smartphone friendly design. However, you can use the mics with other cameras such as DSLRs and mirrorless. There are two models, a single transmitter mic and a double transmitter and mic. What I was looking for was a good quality double mic kit which can connect directly to a smartphone and this one fits the bill. This is the Comica wireless Lavalier setup. And you can see that I have the, little, the clip on mic there which uh, plugs into the transmitter here and the transmitter connects pretty well, pretty quickly to the receiver which is plugged into the uh, S9, uh, Samsung S9 uh, 3.5mm headphone socket. And the good thing is that you can move away, you can move around and uh, you should get exactly the same level of audio quality no matter where you stand. Well, this has a range of 60 meters. Note that ideally you would want the mics to record separately to the left and right channels. Unfortunately, this Comica wireless setup mixes the two mics together and there's no way to get separated audio from each mic. The single mic version has a rechargeable inbuilt lithium battery, operates in the 520 to 526 MHz frequency and has six channels. Meanwhile, the double mic kit needs AAA batteries or external power, operates in the 606 to 614 MHz range and has eight channels to choose from. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.